Have you found that in certain areas of your life, your faith is unwavering? In these parts of your life, you stand firm, you're grounded in God's promises, and nothing seems to shake your confidence. Yet in other areas, doubt creeps in, leaving you unsteady and unsure. Today, we're exploring how to move from an unsteady heart to one deeply rooted in God's truth in our daily shift. Welcome back to Life More Abundant, day 9 of 21. Over the course of this series, we've been diving deep into what it means to live out the promises God has for us. Each day, we explore a new facet of living a life of abundance, rooted in biblical truths and practical steps. If you've missed any of the previous days, no worries. There's a link in the description below that would take you to the blog with all the teachings and resources. If you're new to me, hi, my name is Raquel and I'm your GPS for success. Before we jump into today's topic, let's recap what we discussed yesterday, the hardened heart. We learned that sometimes due to past pain, disappointment, and even self-reliance, and that is a big one right now with that hustle culture, our hearts can become hard. This blocks us from fully receiving the blessings that God has already sown into our lives. But the good news is, it's never too late to repent, realign with God's will, and invite Him to soften our heart. By seeking understanding, we can break through that hardness and open ourselves up to the abundant life Jesus promised. Today we move into the phase of the heart's journey, the unsteady heart, which is also known as the stony ground heart. Now this phase can be deceptive because it looks like faith is growing, but underneath the roots are shallow and the growth is fragile. And I know when I was rereading some of my notes and even what I wrote in my best-selling book on prayer on Amazon. When we hear the word shallow, we're like, I'm not shallow about that. (laughs) I believe. Why isn't it working like the other things are? And I'm going to share with you in a little bit how God showed me this. Then in some areas, this is exactly why things have been taking a longer time to manifest in this realm. Because it's a form of shallowness And maybe when I share how it's showing up for me, you'll be like, oh, (laughs) raising hand, that's how it's showing up for me too. I have developed some unhealthy habits. I have gifts of propheticness and revelatory gifts. And so I have these aha moments and I can see what God is doing and I get these amazing downloads. So what happens, right? Again, it's like this scripture, our foundation of scripture, which I will read right now. Mark 4, verses 16 through 17. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure, but for a time, afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, Immediately they are offended. This is me. (laughs) In this passage, Jesus describes people who hear God's word and receive it with joy, right? And maybe we're receiving it with joy because we have that understanding. So we get excited. We get hopeful. We're ready to act on what we've learned. And we start. But the commitment is shallow. And I'll tell you how it was showing up for me. And I didn't realize that my commitment was shallow. And it was really the excitement (laughs) and the joy and not really sitting in in it, what God was saying. So what happens when trials come, because they do, we quickly lose our resolve. Our initial enthusiasm fades. And then we release what we had initially embraced. So this is one of the most dangerous and deceptive stages of the heart. On the surface, it does look like progress is being made, just as seeds planted in shallow soil sprout quickly. But the lack of deep roots makes it impossible for the growth to last. When pressure or difficulty comes, the roots are not strong enough to hold firm. And what happens? The plant withers. 
The stony grown heart is a warning to us all. Many of us have experienced moments when we receive a word from God and we're immediately filled with joy and anticipation. <laughs> Raising my hand. We see a bit of progress, right? Maybe even experience a few wins and we're excited. But then, almost without warning, difficulties arise. These could be challenges in relationships, finances, health, spiritual battles, and those things shake our confidence. The heat is turned up, and suddenly, the faith we thought was strong feels shaky. This is a critical moment in our spiritual journey. We Will we let the difficulties steal the word that God has planted in our hearts? Or will we stand firm and allow our faith to take root and grow deeper. And before I go into the nature of trials, this is how it was showing up in my life. I would get excited. I would see where God was going. I'm like, yes, I know exactly where you're taking me. And yeah, and then I get some quick wins and then I will go on to the next thing <laughs> and get the next revelation and God would be so good. And, and I would get another download as I'm reading the scripture or I'm at church or I'm listening to a song. It was just just like the heavens are open up above me. But what was happening was I was getting all these quick wins, right? Like this scripture says, but there was no root. And so when I was asking God the other day, not the other day, time seems to wash all together, but recently, and it's coming back to me again, (laughs) because <laughs> I'm undoing those bad habits of not taking the time. I said, why haven't certain things happened? And I know that they're mine. I know what you've shown me. I just have this deep knowing. I know that I know that I know. And it was this scripture really said, you're not sitting in it long enough. So what is, what was he trying to tell me? <laughs> this scripture, I was not really sitting in, allowing it to take root, the word that he gave me, I was not giving it the process of time. And it doesn't take a lot of time. It only takes a few minutes a day just to focus on it, to speak over it, to imagine myself and what he said. But I was really, it's almost like becoming a junkie in a way. Right, I was chasing the next dopamine high of what else was there. And there's so much in the word. And when you're hanging out with God, it's so much fun because he shows you all this stuff. But I kept ignoring him trying to lead me back to what he had previously said. And so I would have the quick wins. (laughs) Then things would happen and it just felt like Somebody was putting water on my fire and I couldn't hold on to it. But it was because I was chasing one thing after the other. I had developed this bad habit of, and what else? And what else? And what else? And in one hand, there's nothing wrong with that because we want to stay open and curious and soft. There's always more because God is so expansive. And at the same time, Bringing in the harmony to this is not really about balance, but harmony. What is it that God has already shown us, right? For me, what did he show me? What is he saying that he wants to happen in my life in a shorter amount of time? And am I honoring what he said, that part about the timing and sitting in that revelation until the root is so deep? that it becomes as unshakable as my knowing about my salvation. And even now it's just like, oh, you know, he's been trying to tell me this for weeks. (laughs) I am not exempt from these messages. Some of this is real time. He is reminding me, even as I'm recording right now, you are not sitting in it long enough. And that's what this series is about, is really using this 1% model that I've talked about before, 1% of your day, which is less than 15 minutes. And there's a lot of 
different ways where you can supercharge yourself. So the roots take hold very, very fast. And it's things that I do with my clients all the time. And with me, and we have to be mindful, especially those who are serving other people, uh, whether you're a coach or you're a minister or in that capacity where you're serving a lot of people, it is so easy to serve others and to be of service of others all the time because it's fun, because you are getting those dopamine hits and the serotonin hits (laughs) because you're in the flow of why you were created and it feels so good. You're living in your purpose. We have to keep in harmony to put first things first. And that is to first root in what God is saying to first to sit in the word that he gave us to eat of it. We are to eat of God's word every single day, right? We're told that we should not live where we will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are we taking the time to eat from the word of God on that one particular thing that he told us? I know I haven't, and I repent of that. And that's why some things have not happened yet. It's never God. And so now it's recognizing my bad habit. (laughs) There is this book coming to mind called Who Moved My Cheese? And in that book, I'm scurry. You give me something to do and gone. (laughs) I scurry off and I go do it. And it was the same with the revelations. I take it and I run with it. Again, on the one hand, it's good because I've received it and I'm a doer of the word. But I was not doing other parts of the word. And so that's what's causing And what has caused disharmony and caused a slowdown of some of the things God wanted me to be moving into and living out already because I received it and I ran with it, (laughs) but I didn't continue to root it in as I was running. Now, going back to the nature of the trials, it's important to understand that the trials and persecutions we face are not from God. God does not use hardship to punish us or to test our faith. He doesn't. Instead, these challenges are orchestrated by the enemy of our souls. It's right there. That is the enemy who's doing it. He's the one who seeks to kill, to steal, to destroy anything good that God has planted in our lives. The enemy knows that if we allow God's word to take root in our lives and in our hearts, it will produce a harvest that he cannot stop. Our lives become walking testimonies of God's faithfulness, his mercy, and his grace. The enemy fears this because when others see God's promises come to fruition in our lives, it becomes harder for them to doubt God's goodness. And how many of us, and if you're listening still, we're all big mouths. (laughs) We love to brag on God, on his goodness. And that actually opens up the door for them, right? It softens their heart and opens up their capacity to receive. So the enemy's strategy is to attack us early before the word has a chance to take root. He sends in afflictions, persecutions, distractions even, even things that we like, even things that are good, hoping we will give up before we see the harvest It's a distraction for many of us. He knows that if we can be discouraged, we are less likely to hold on to our faith and the promises of God will not come to full maturity in our lives. So let's pause here and recognize this tactic for what it is. The enemy wants to make you think that the challenges you're facing are proof that God's word isn't working. He wants you to believe that if things were really changing, you wouldn't be struggling. But this is a lie. The truth is the enemy is attacking because he knows that God's word is working. He knows that if you hold on to it, you will experience the abundant life that God has promised. It's not a coincidence that challenges often come right after a breakthrough or a new revelation from God, right? I just explained what was was happening to me. 
what is continuing happened to me, but some of that, it's not the enemy. It's the habits, the bad habits that I have created for myself. And we need to be aware of those two. Think about the times in your life when you felt excited about a new direction, a fresh start, a deeper understanding of God's plan for me, or for you, sorry, not for me. (laughs) But just as I said, right, that was my problem. I had a deeper understanding for God's plan for me. And I was so excited that it, I didn't bother creating the root. How many times have you felt that initial joy like I do, only to be met with immediate resistance? And sometimes it's not resistance. It's the shiny new thing. <laughs> this is the moment when the stony ground is revealed. Will we let the difficulties steal the joy and hope we once had? Or will we dig deeper and allow our faith to grow stronger? And it's the same. Will we let the quick win, the joy, the hope, the excitement that we got really have us chase more instead of digging digging deeper? Now, one of the things that we need to be aware of is right in nature. The health of a plant is determined by its roots. The roots provide stability, draw in essential nutrients, and anchor the plant so it can survive storms and droughts. And without deep roots, a plant is vulnerable to the elements, and any external pressure can easily cause it to fall and wither. It's not enough to have a surface-level faith. We can't just rely on emotional highs like I have been doing. And it's so easy for me to create those because I understand God's heart or even moments of inspiration to sustain us. I was actually moving from one thing to the other without allowing the roots to take place. Our faith must be deeply rooted in the truth of God's word so that when trials come or distractions, we are not easily shaken or moved One of the biggest challenges we face in moving from an unsteady heart to rooted in faith is consistency. It's easy, (laughs) and you can tell from the tone of my voice, to get excited about a new revelation from God, but it's much harder to stay committed to that revelation, especially when life gets difficult. This is where many of us struggle. We want quick results. I mean, who doesn't, right? (laughs) And when we don't see immediate fruit, we can get discouraged. But deep roots take time to grow. And just as the tree doesn't become strong overnight, neither does our faith. It does take daily effort. And it's part of it's because of what I've already shared. I mean, your brain is trying to process 1.8 gigabytes of data a day, every day. It's over 15 billion bits of data. Of course, it's going to take effort. So as we reflect on today's teaching, it's important to ask ourselves, in what areas of my life am I still unsteady? Where am I quick to lose hope or give up when changes come, when challenges come, when the new shiny thing comes? These are the areas where God is inviting us to grow deeper and to allow his word to take root and to strengthen our faith. The unsteady heart is a phase and we all go through it, but it doesn't have to be where we stay. By staying connected to God, digging deeper into his word and choosing to trust him, even when things get tough, we can move beyond the surface level faith and cultivate a heart that is deeply rooted in his truth. God's promises are true and they will come to pass in your life if you hold on to them and don't lose focus. (laughs) Don't be like me sometimes. Ooh, squirrel. That's a shiny new thing. Don't let the enemy steal what God has planted. Stand firm. Allow your faith to take root and watch as God brings a harvest of abundance into your life. Until next time, which will be very, very soon, may God's richest and best be yours. Bye now.